Good morning. Welcome to Foresight Friday at NIOSH. My name is Sarah Felkner, and I'm the Associate Director for Research Integration and Director of the Office of Research Integration at NIOSH. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the April 2022 installment of Foresight Friday. We developed this webinar series to promote interest and capacity in the application of strategic foresight in occupational safety and health and to create a forum where we can exchange ideas and best practices in strategic foresight with our extramural partners. We're glad you could join us today. Today, we are privileged to have Crystal Vander Elst from Policy Horizons Canada speak to us about the importance of strategic foresight for governments. Policy Horizons Canada is a federal government organization that conducts strategic foresight to help the government of Canada develop future-oriented policy and programs that are more robust, resilient, and responsive in the face of disruptive change. Crystal is the Director General of Policy Horizons Canada and the former Head of Strategic Foresight at the World Economic Forum. She holds three master's degrees, including an MBA from the Yale School of Management, and is a Fulbright Scholar and Rotary Foundation Ambassadorial Scholar. Today, Crystal will share examples of how Policy Horizons Canada uses foresight to inform the development of policies and programs in the face of an uncertain future. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Crystal Vanderst. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's uh, really an honor to be here and I look forward to the conversation we'll be, we'll be having. Um, as being said, I'm, I'm Crystal, um, so sitting in Ottawa uh, today, I'm working for uh, the Government of Canada, um, being Director General of Policy Horizons Canada. Um, for those who don't know yet, um, uh, it was introduced a little bit who Policy Horizons Canada is, but essentially we're kind of the central uh, entity within the Government of Canada that provides foresight. And so we are not the only people, of course, and, and only places within the government of Canada that is doing foresight, but we're kind of a little bit of the central hub. And our mandate is really to help the policymakers and the decision makers to think about the long-term future, about what changes we might be seeing in the policy landscape over the horizon in the coming decades that policymakers and decision makers need to be aware of when they're thinking about their forward-looking programs and policies and initiatives. So we're spending a lot of time doing kind of research um, on, on how, you know, what changes might uh, we see in the future, whether they're societal changes, technology changes, economic, political, environmental uh, changes. We're looking kind of at a full set of, of changes that we might be facing as long as they are relevant. Um, of course, to policy making. And beyond the research, obviously, we're working with those decision makers and with the policy makers and engaging them in conversations uh, around those changes so that they can actually take that up into their decision making, because it is our mandate to think about kind of how the landscape might change. And we help the people who actually make the actual decisions about the way forward uh, in Canada. And beyond that, uh, we're also spending a lot of time on building the capacity across the organization, the government of Canada, so that we are not the only ones uh, practicing and helping the system to do uh, more foresight and more structured foresight, that, but we're really building up that capacity across the whole system. And so we're sitting actually at, at the space where we're really uh, working across all departments. So we don't sit, we don't work for one or the other department. We're working across department. We're working on topics that actually, when change happens, you you would see uh, an impact on different policy areas. And so we're fortunate to be guided, um, and and that is quite unique in Canada. Also, we're guided by a deputy minister steering committee in which we have 15 members uh, of the highest uh, senior ranks of the public service that are actually guiding our work but that we're also engaging with on the content of our work. So it's a perfect landing ground. It's one of our landing grounds of, of the, the research that we're doing to make sure that this gets translated and, and taken up in, in, into the thinking um, of the policymakers. So that's quite a privilege that we're having here in Canada also. 
So why do we do foresight? Now, why is foresight so important for, for, for governments, whether this is kind of for Canada or, or for other public services and, and policymakers? It's because essentially beyond working, of course, on kind of uh, the policies and initiatives and service provision that a public service does um, in, in the present, um, a lot of the policymakers, policymaking in essence is very often about the long term. It's achieving some of those long term goals for society to create a prosperous, inclusive um, society. So um, the problem, of course, has become, as you all know, that, uh, that this is happening, has to happen kind of in, in, in a bigger context of change. So change is happening faster and the consequences of change or disruptive events uh, is becoming more significant. And so it becomes more complicated as, as, as the context becomes more influential actually on, on, on Canada and on the different uh, policy, uh, policy areas. And so, but the traditionally kind of the, the, way, the, the way humans, not just policymakers, but the way people kind of think about, um, about the future and what needs to be done and how we go about um, planning for the future and, and implementing decisions is that we kind of rely on what we know, right? We're kind of all experts uh, or, or we've been incentivized to become experts. So um, we're really building our knowledge of decisions very often on kind of what we know from the past and from the current to kind of extrapolate that in some kind of way to make an opinion, to forecast about what the future is going to be like. And that allows us then kind of to come back to a place where we can be the experts. Once we know kind of what the future context is going to be, what the strategic issues are that we have to solve for, we can kind of rely back on, 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 on our expertise actually to be able to, to, to identify what are the best policies and programs to, to move forward. But the problem again is that, um, you know, that, that with the forecasting, it, it relies uh, really, it relies really about our thinking about how the system worked in, in the past and in the present. And that, that works the, less, the least and least, right? It doesn't work so well anymore because we see that the world is significantly shifting. Um, there's plenty of uncertainty, as, as you will agree. Uh, but we're also seeing a lot of pluralism. So people are looking at things from different value systems, from different norms, from different ways of uh, perspectives. And so it creates also a lot of ambiguity. And we have just a lot of novelty coming up, not only from technology, but there's a lot of new things happening in the world actually at an accelerated speed. Things we don't necessarily understand very well where they might be going or what might be the consequences. And on top of all that change, um, we have quite a number of um, high impact events or ex extreme uncertainties um, like we have, of course, with the pandemic, but also on the geopolitical front uh, currently. So some of those, uh, just, just to give a bit of an example also of some of the things we're thinking about and what policymakers uh, face from a, from a global context, a big picture context, and that creates that difficulty is that you know, at policy horizons, we look, for example, at kind of how, how this, the policy landscape is going to change in terms of not only the public health, but, but the emergency response. We think we might go into a future where we will constantly be in kind of an emergency response, whether it is, um, you know, to deal still with, with the actual COVID um, problems, but also you know, with the consequences of climate change that are becoming drastically visible uh, and, and that will probably progress. So all this is going to change uh, the economy, it's going to change trade, it's going to change kind of inclusivity and inequality within societies. But also at the same time, we have the digitization of the economy. Now you can say like, okay, we've seen digital coming up uh, since a long time, but we really believe that when, uh, when a whole suite of these technologies, including blockchain, internet of things, et cetera, when they combine and mature and become kind of the, the normal way of doing business to say so, um, we will see tremendous changes again in the economy in the way uh, goods are consumed and produced, which again has significant implications on the future of work, on which type of resources have value and, and so forth. But on top of that, uh, on top of the digitization of, uh, of uh, products and services, we're also looking at kind of how the digital world is integrating with our built environment, the internet of things, as we call it. And, and, and we at Policy Horizons also look at the biodigital conversions where the 
biological systems and digital systems are starting to merge tremendously and it is changing uh, different um, industries. It's raising a lot of ethical issues um, in moving forward. And, and so we, we have quite some, uh, quite some uncertainty on that. Of course, we're also looking at a lot of deep changes within society in terms of how we make sense of the world, kind of how do we take information, how do we process it, and how it is actually impacting our behaviors and our actions. And, 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 and the way we relate to each other is very much changing, whether you see that at an international, you know, at an individual level, between groups of society, internationally, between nations. It, there is just a more competing and, and contrasting um, kind of worldviews that are emerging and that are starting to clash at very different levels. And of course, we see the governance levels, um, the governance systems being heavily challenged. Um, certainly, in, it was already an, a trend, as you know, it was already going on, but it is certainly um, being, being put in on, on speed, uh, high speed uh, velocity. So, so ultimately, it, it is kind of all these types of changes that policymakers have to deal with, because these are big changes that are happening in the context, but ultimately, they kind of change your local economies, they change your local societies, and they impact all of the policy domains. So you, you really have to start thinking about, about all that. And, and, and the problem very often is that faced with so much uncertainty, people have the tendency to do one or of two things. Very often people go like, um, okay, so if we don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, the only thing we know is going to change, there's going to be big, big, big disruption, but we don't really know where things are going, so why bother, right? We'll take it one day at a time and, and, and we'll just, you know, do with it. And, and I think we've seen that quite significantly in some areas uh, with COVID, for example. Um, it, it, it just like, why even try? We'll, we'll deal with it when the problems come up. On the other side, you have also a different reaction, uh, which is kind of my natural way of, of doing, uh, of thinking is kind of what if, what if, what if. And so in a structure, in a very unstructured way, we think about all, all the problems that might come up in the, in the future. And, and we kind of worry about that. But none of those kind of ways of, of you know, the ignoring or the, the tremendous worrying in an unstructured way are very productive, right? Um, they, they, they just create ultimately knee-jerk reactions. It's, it, they inhibit uh, good decision-making. And ultimately when stakes are really high, that type of kind of behavior of how to think about uncertainty in the future is, is um, quite nefast, right? So, and, and, and that's where strategic foresight actually comes in, right? So strategic foresight ultimately provides us with kind of the tools and the methods and the way of thinking um, that, that, that allow us to actually take that uncertainty about the future and to engage in a, in a strategic and, and constructive way with that. So foresight is really kind of the assessment, right? Of what might happen in the future and what might be needed in the future. And when we talk about strategic foresight, it is more kind of that planning, that structured planning capacity that, that, that allows us to actually, it's the methods and the tools and skills and the mindsets that allow us to really work with those uncertainties and still be able to make kind of decisions in the present. So it allows us to just make better sense of what are the circumstances in, you know, that we might encounter to think about what does it mean in terms of, of challenges and opportunities and thus we can start to kind of think about what we do about all these things. It's, it's a really powerful sense making tool. And so, and, and, and it's because of that actually that you see that the policymakers have, as, as we said, like they still have to achieve very long-term goals. They have to deal with a lot of, uh, deeply system, system level uh, challenges and with some of those very long-term common global uh, challenges that, that they need kind of these tools and these systems to be able to engage with that um, in, in a structured way. And that's why you see in governments and in public institutions like yourselves also, um, really the need go up for foresight for capabilities. So a lot of organizations are building up more their, um, their capabilities in that. We have kind of long history already, but even Canada is further building up, um, building up its resources. And so 
while we're while we're thinking about the future, the way we think about this is really if, if we agree, we have to kind of uh, work with the future in a more structured way. Um, we, we look at the future in different kind of ways, and that's where it comes also into into kind of which methodologies you're using, etc. But ultimately, we look at the future in in two different ways. We look at on one side, the work that we're doing at Policy Horizons is looking at kind of what might happen, right? Kind of, we work with kind of what the policymakers and the city makers are expecting the future to be. Like, how will the future look like um, on, on the common basis of kind of the trends and, and, and the projections that we can be making? What are we expecting? But we're also helping policymakers and, and decision makers to think through um, how, how might things play out differently than we're expecting? What are some of those scenarios and alternative futures that we might see when disruption comes up, when there's actually bends in certain trends or there's novelty coming and kind of shake up how the future um, might emerge? Because that's really, really important. As I, I will quote my deputy minister, he says, like, we, we can't just, as a public institution, we cannot just bet on the fact that the future is gonna play out the way we kind of expect it, because there's a high risk of policy failure, actually, when you have at the same time, you know, policymakers are really good, actually, agencies and, 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 and public uh, sector in kind of scaling up existing tools, kind of throw more money or throw kind of more resources against existing uh, programs and initiatives. Where there's a, there's a risk of policy failure is very often that you end up in a situation that you haven't prepared for, uh, there's suddenly that disruption is happening, and then you have to kind of invent, upscale, implement kind of new policy tools. And that's often, that, that's a great risk area. So by consequence, policymakers really have to think about what might come up so that they can kind of rehearse the future and kind of prepare for it. But at the same time, um, the difficulty and the privilege of being in the public sector is that you also have to look at the future in a way where uh, you are a change agent. So, so your decisions actually are also shaping the future. So by consequence, you don't only think about what might happen, but you also have to think about what is society wanting, right? What is our kind of desired future and how can our decisions change that future and how do we think about our decisions how how do they change the future actually and what might be sometimes some of the unintended consequences of, of our actions we have to think those through uh, before we actually get to, to 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 make those type of decisions so that we're creating the future we actually want and don't end up in the future we we haven't anticipated again so that's really kind of how we think about uh, the future what might happen and how are we going to anticipate that and deal with that but also what is the future we want to create and so um how we do that is actually um through a number of different activities that we have i will specifically talk about policy horizons um, so we're doing a lot of research. As we said, we're engaging a lot um, with our communities, with the people who are actually using the foresight, and, and we're building the capacity of the system to absorb actually uh, the foresight and to work with it and to, to gain the skills. So from a research perspective, um, all the topics we're dealing with are always topics where that don't belong to a certain kind of area or policy area. They're kind of dealing with big changes within society. And we reflect on that on how, how that actually touches on different uh, policy areas. So we, we said we would do a lot of work on the economy, how technology is changing the economy, the nature of work economic value within value change, how that is shifting. We're working on, on the biodigital um, um, changes that are happening. At Policy Horizons, we also started about two years ago um, to do a significant work on, on kind of the so societal changes. As you might know, most of the foresight that is happening traditionally kind of in the world or in public sector is kind of more driven from a technology or an economic or a geopolitical perspective. We felt that, that Deeply within society, there's big changes that are happening actually to our social tissue, the social structure, the social connections between people and, and how we think and how we relate to each other, et cetera, that we started a real program, foresight program on that. So we looked at kind of what is changing our social systems. Then we moved on to really digging deeper into how we make sense of the world, how is that changing and how will that impact kind of a different way of behaving and a different way of making decisions. And, and, and so we also working on kind of the more deep um, 
changes in people's lives. So how are life courses being transformed by, by factors, uh, kind of economic, technological, geopolitical, et cetera, and, and, and value systems. How is that changing kind of how we experience life? What roles we have throughout our lives, how we make decisions, um, et cetera. So we're having a, a, a very strong kind of uh, social foresight, as we say, um, that we've been developing over, over, over the past two, three years. And of course, like everyone, we've done a lot of work on uh, kind of the long-term consequences of COVID, because as most of the people, um, when COVID hit, as, as you will remember, many of the policymakers and decision makers are finding themselves in, in a bit of the, the windmill of having to make very short-term decisions and, and moving very fast. And as policy horizons, the value we could bring to the system is kind of to take that step back and to think like, okay, so what is going to be the longer term consequences? What can we see in 12, in COVID terms, long term is like 12, at that time, 12, 18 months, two years type of consequences. And how can we bring that actually into decision making? Um, and so, so we had that space to actually think and engage um, and, and bring that value perspective of keeping kind of a, a broader perspective and a more long-term perspective, which was really appreciated in the system. So of course, there's a lot of research going on, but we also do, as we said, like a lot of engagement. So that is something we've been building out more and more also over the last years. Um, so we've created, for example, a federal foresight network where we're bringing people who do kind of foresight uh, sometimes on the corner of their desk, sometimes as a, more significantly, but we bring these communities that do foresight in some kind of way together so we can share experience, share knowledge, and, and so we're building really up that capacity across the different departments. We organize scan clubs in which we, you know, commonly scan around to typical areas. We're doing speaker series a bit like this one. So we have our horizon talks. We have the futures week that is coming up at the beginning of uh, June. So it's our conference. It's the second year we're doing this conference. Um, so, so we have a lot of people also we're bringing in to have conversations with us and, and we expose kind of the foresight of different organizations just as you're doing here um, to the rest of our, uh, of our communities. And, and we're also doing a lot of foresight training and we're specifically doing a lot of work engaging with different departments. So that is something that we found very valuable also to, to, to develop. And that's, that's one of the development areas that Policy Horizons has been very engaged in. So we are doing uh, foresight for a number of reasons as, as, as you might uh, imagine our portfolio is quite broad in the type of interventions that we're doing beyond kind of the research and, 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 and the more, uh, you know, the more specific uh, kind of capacity buildings. We're really trying to bring foresight into where we find that it has a lot of impact foresight is when you also bring it into into real kind of uh, decision making processes that are already existing. So, for example, we, we intervene uh, often um, with, with policy analysts and, and decision makers kind of to bring some of our foresight when they do their policy development. So we're helping them kind of think about what the context is that will be uh, that they might be faced um, as they think about the specific policy area, for example, of course, when uh, with our COVID work, we had conversations with the people who were thinking about kind of uh, what economic recovery might look like and, and what social support systems need to be put in place or how they needed to be changed uh, when, when COVID kind of became a reality. And, and we helped them think through some of the assumptions that were underlying their plans and, and how they, they might need to take that into account. We also did a lot of work uh, with different departments thinking about the next digital economy, kind of what does that mean in terms of, uh, you know, taxation systems, in terms of social support systems. And so we're really trying to help uh, people reflect on, on how is the context changing and, and how does that and bring that into their existing policy development areas. But we're using it kind of to help policy. We're also using uh, foresight uh, with, with some, um, you know, in some of our collaborations to help agencies or departments uh, set their own strategies. So really do strategy development. And one of the examples is that we worked with our Canadian Revenue Agency, um, where they had an initiative thinking about um, what their agency would look like uh, with the vision of 2030. So how would their agency actually adapt to some of the societal changes that were happening? They wanted to have a high level 
uh, conversation um, on that. Uh, so we work with senior management there and with their board to, to help them create some of those aspirational futures, taking into account the, the, the future contexts that they might face. Where sometimes when you do this type of work, um, you come to a place where you can help organizations to rethink their mission. For example, in the translation bureau, uh, while they were thinking about their strategy and kind of thinking about how they might actually uh, work kind of what the impact would be of um, uh, artificial intelligence, they came to the conclusion actually that they had to kind of review uh, where what their value proposition was within the system and, and how they could actually adopt a lot of that uh, technology and potentially reframe kind of the value that they were bringing. So they have really benefited from doing foresight in, in rethinking you know, the value of themselves within the system. We have also used a lot of foresight, um, or foresight has been used, and we work with departments um, to wind tunnel, stress test some of the policy suites. An example of that is our future of work. Um, work actually, where in the future of work, we're kind of depicting some of the major game changers we might see in, in the nature and the quantity of work. And that work has then been used to stress test some of the policy suites like the labor market policy suites, uh, the social security, safe, social safety net uh, policy suites. And, and in thinking of like, okay, so if, if the nature and the quantity of, um, you know, of, of work is changing with our current policy suites, will we actually be achieving our goals or are we missing something? And one of the examples that came out there uh, was that there needs to be more focus, of course, like on the gig economy, but also that, um, for example, Canada is doing very well, actually, in, in educating people prior to them uh, go to work. We are also very good in educating people or reskilling people once they're out of the job and they have to reskill. Um, if we're going to go to a future where the reskilling is needed a lot more, you might you have to think about how you reskill actually people while they're still in the previous job to prepare for the next job. So you kind of avoid that uh, non-productive uh, moment for, for workers. And, and so there, there was a gap there. So, so there's been pilots that are being launched and reflections there then on, on how do you deal with that. So, so you can really work with some of that foresight to think like, you know, uh, what we're doing, are we achieving our goals or is something missing? Do we need to change anything here to be better prepared for the future? And then um, may, maybe um, also we are using, uh, we're helping actually departments and organizations um, in, in, in their kind of um, influencing, let's say, or, or in kind of the mobilization of resources and talent in certain directions. For example, we work, work with the Social Science and Humanities Research Council to identify 16 of the global challenges um, that if, if, if there was more funding and more talent and more resources and more understanding of the social and humanities side, um, to, to, to how we can solve some of those uh, big challenges that would be beneficial. And so um, by putting out these kind of 16 um, global challenges and so that actually the council could uh, fund and funnel kind of um, uh, funding through, through to, to help kind of those challenges, it's a way of kind of using foresight um, to, to be able to, to kind of collectively decide where, where funding is going and, and kind of what are the main problems that need to be solved um, with public funding. We're also doing a lot of collaborative visioning, kind of everyone coming together, for example, when we were rethinking some years ago the future of the public service, um, there was a nationwide coming together of public servants. Um, thinking about what is changing in the context, what is changing within the system, what, and then thinking about what does it mean actually for the space that public service takes in society and what does it mean about the skills. So that's just an example. And then maybe a last way that we're really using foresight tremendously actually is to, to, to improve that anticipatory governance. I call that also like kind of to build the muscle, the foresight muscle of the organization. So we're doing these future suites, networks, and really creating that space that is so needed to think about the future. Very often policymakers find themselves kind of in, in situations where they have to very quickly make decisions, constantly kind of work on the next proposal. And, and, 
and, and there is a big demand actually for creating that space for thinking and, and really kind of helping um, to create that foresight so that when they, when they need to make decisions, they actually have that uh, uh, background. So um, a lot of our efforts actually go also in those spaces. So, and through all of that, of course, to all of these, uh, you know, the thinking and, and the way we interact with, with the different um, departments and the collaborations we're having, um, and, and the events that we're organizing, we're not only providing kind of the content, but we're also very mindful all the time that we're creating the capacity of the other people to do foresight. So for us, it's really important that, that the government of Canada as the public, the federal public service as a whole kind of increases um, in their foresight capabilities and, and capacities and that we're supporting that and not just be kind of the, the, the group of people um, who, who kind of have the privilege to do this type of work. Um, and so I, I'll leave it there a bit. So I try to kind of uh, explain a bit kind of where we come from, why we do this, why policymakers finding this so important and, and the demand is really increasing how we look at certain uh, at the future in terms of what might happen in terms of how we're creating the future. And, and, and I try to explain a bit kind of how we do things. Uh, really, a lot of research, a lot of engagements, a lot of conversations, bringing it in the real processes where people are actually making decisions and are working with the foresight and building up the capacity. And so I hope that gives a little bit kind of a view of kind of why we do things, how we do things, and I kind of hopefully give you some, um, give you some idea of, of what we're trying to achieve as impact and hopefully inspire you um, to, to, to ask questions or to do uh, kind of similar work um, in your organization. So I will leave it there for the moment and I look forward to the conversation. Thank you, Crystal, for your presentation today and your time today. And thank you to all of our attendees. Next quarter, we're very excited to host Dr. Cho Kong from the Saeed Business School at the University of Oxford as our featured Foresight Friday at NIOSH speaker. On July 29th, Dr. Kong will draw on his decades of experience as Shell's chief political analyst and a senior member of the Shell Scenarios team to discuss the integration of strategic foresight into organizational planning and practice. So please watch your email for additional information and registration uh, link for that upcoming event. So this will conclude our April 22nd Foresight Friday at NIOSH. Um, thank you once again, everyone, for your attendance. We hope that you stay safe and healthy and have a wonderful day.